Mr. Keith Colston, the Administrative Director of the Maryland Commission on Indian Affairs and a member of the Tuscarora and Lumbee tribes, performed a dance to honor Fort Meade's warriors during Wednesday's Native American Heritage Month observation. More from Mr. Colston in a moment. Also on this edition, Fort Meade hosts an Audie Murphy induction ceremony. We'll take a look at the U.S. Army Field Band's holiday schedule, plus it's Army-Navy time again. These stories and more on Meade Week. Hello, I'm Brian Spann. November is Native American Heritage Month. This year's event, sponsored by the Air Force's 70th Intelligence Wing, featured guest speaker Keith Colston, the director of the Maryland Commission on Indian Affairs. Colston began his presentation by honoring Fort Meade's warriors, pointing out that we have much more in common than you might think. There are times that we would gather together when our warriors would go into battle and return from battle. We honored them with songs. We honored also those who did not return because we mourned them. What I'm getting at, there are a variety of songs that we sing. There are a variety of ways that we sing our songs. And so therefore, this first song that I want to give to each and every person here, and more importantly, to any of our retired military, is a veteran song. I sing this song because this is what we do at all of our gatherings, and what most people today call powwows. When we come together, we have a protocol that we follow. And I hope that you will realize for whatever time that I'm on this stage, for whatever time I share my words, yeah. you're not going to see the differences between my people and your people. Hopefully you're going to realize there are so many more common characteristics than there are differences. As the director of the Indian Affairs in Maryland, his main mission is to obtain recognition for thousands of Maryland Native Americans. Native Maryland tribes include the Assateague, Akahonic, Pocomoke, and the Shawnee of Garrett County. Colston closed his presentation by urging everyone to get involved and learn more about Native American culture. So yes, it's our job to get tribal people right here in Maryland state recognized, to have the state recognize them as an American Indian, Native American group, clan, band, or tribe. And we have succeeded in that because before Governor Martin O'Malley came into office, before I was a administrative director for this commission, there were people working long before me to do so. It took them over 16 years to receive what we refer to as Maryland Indian status. In other news, Fort Meade hosted a Sergeant Audie Murphy induction ceremony for eight NCOs representing units within the Military District of Washington. The Asymmetric Warfare Group's Lieutenant Colonel Sinise Limbaca was there and filed this report. Fort Meade hosted an Audie Murphy Club induction ceremony November 14th for eight non-commissioned officers representing the Military District of Washington who demonstrated outstanding leadership and performance. The keynote speaker at the ceremony was Command Sergeant Major Edwin Rodriguez, the CSM for the Office of Security Cooperation, Iraq. But this, this day is, uh, is about the inductees to the uh, Sergeant Audie Murphy um, Club. These great soldiers uh, have accomplished one of the most difficult steps in their Army career, selection to be inducted to the Audie Murphy Club. After the nomination process, several boards long hours of studying and sacrificing, valuable family time, you made it. Congratulations. To be an Audie Murphy member, uh, you must demonstrate commitment, confidence, and character. These traits represent professionalism, and without a doubt, without a doubt, these great members has done all, have done all of it. Two NCOs represented Ford Meade. One of them is Staff Sergeant Chris Montgomery, assigned to the Asymmetric Warfare Group. I think it's a huge accomplishment in a career, and uh, now I think it's time to give back to the community, and this is a way of doing it. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. We showed them this was our field, huh? and that's what we got to do every time. Huh? Who the champs over here? Huh? Yeah. Who the champs? We are. Who the champs? We are. Who else is this? We are. Hey, let me get Army on the Indeed, Army has dominated the series as of late. Who will win this year? Find out December 5th as the West County Chamber of Commerce once again sponsors the 14th annual Fort Meade Army-Navy flag football game. The tailgate starts at 3 with the kickoff at 4. Again, it's free and open to the public. We'll just have to see how Navy responds this year. Meanwhile, if you haven't had the opportunity to see the U.S. Army Field Band Sound of the Bells annual Christmas concert performances, you'll have several opportunities starting with the December 4th performance at Meade Senior High School. The tour continues on the 5th at James Monroe High in Fredericksburg, Virginia. See the Jazz Ambassadors take the stage on the 8th at the Scottish Rite Masonic Center in Baltimore. On the 14th, the Concert Band and Soldiers Chorus go to Hartford Technical School in Bel Air, Maryland, while the Ambassadors play at Centennial High School in Ellicott City. The concerts are free, but you have to have a ticket. Go to armyfieldband.com or call 301-677-6586. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great Thanksgiving and a great Mead Week.